How's it going guys? Welcome to SHOT Show 2020. We are at the Wii booth. We're sitting down with David and he's gonna run us through a bunch of Wii knives. And uh, at the end of this thing, we have a very special guest and a very special knife to show you. You're gonna wanna hold on for this, I promise. What do we got? All right, thank you, Zach. Welcome to the 2020 SHOT Show. We're gonna go with the Wii knife. So first, I wanna start you off with the Mini Buster by Snacks Design Studio. This knife, I, I will first, my confession, I am a work cliff lover. I love a work cliff edge, no matter the form. And this straight edge, it just yells to me, get me. You have your dark anodized handle with bright hardware to that contrast, a very smooth transition into a flipper. Then you have a one piece clip on the back. So this knife, whether you want to use it for self-defense, for utility, for cutting boxes, open letters, Anything you want to do, a work cliff is your knife to go with. And that's my love letter to the work cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I do love a good worn cliff. And with this knife, I have to point out, because it's just so good, the uh, backspacer on this, like the, the, the machining and everything, just the whole back area is just absolutely awesome. Yeah, it definitely so, shows the designer's personality yeah. and the, his, his art, yeah. uh, his, his art history. It's a beautiful knife, absolutely beautiful knife. And the next one is the root kit from a Todd knife, so by Taro and says Todd. Yeah. Uh, this one, you can see, the, I don't know if it will show up well in the video, but this carbon fiber has a marble surface and is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So lightweight handle with a thumb hole opening to make full control over the whole thing. And with the, uh, with I would call the Todd style almost at this point. It says his, his own style yeah. and is reflected fully in the root kit. Yeah, and with this, so something that you guys have done with uh, carbon fiber, and I wanted to see if you guys did it here. So this is a bit of a smoother carbon fiber, but I really like that kind of textured carbon fiber you guys have done as well. We have, we have. Um, Those are really awesome. But this, right. this feels good, but it definitely is kind of a smoother one. Yes, yeah. uh, I think the smooth surface really bring out the the, the, the visual quality I agree. of the marbled carbon yep, fiber. I agree completely. Okay, next one from Raphael. The Gava. The Gava? The Gava. The Gava. Uh, oh, the, Gava. The Gava. Okay, the Gava. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> the, I think the highlight of this knife is the uh, 3D countering and sculpturing on both the blade and the handle. Yeah. So that, that's what makes this knife really stand out because everywhere you turn, there's some kind of carving going on on the back spacer, on the clip, on the handle, on this side, of the, on the front handle, and even on the blade to match. Yeah. So it's a geometric uh, beauty. It's got a lot of accents, but it, it doesn't look obnoxious, right? Not at all, yeah, not at all. I really like that. And I think that highlights a lot of what we does. I mean, we makes a lot of beautiful knives, and I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, they're kind of like artsy knives, you know what I mean? But you see something like this, it's a beautiful knife, but this is just an awesome titanium frame lock. Right. Just Moder use it. Moderation. Exactly. It's beautiful yeah. without going into the excessive need yeah. to show off. I love it. The next one, it's called the Minax. It's uh, uh, from Fern Forge, whose uh, creation of the Odium and his bigger brother Malice have been very well received. So we're very happy that they brought us the Minax. And when you talk about designers and styles, like you look at this and you're like, oh yeah, it's a fair and forge. You know what I mean? Very it much it, it so. comes through, it looks very beautiful so. and it comes through. So, goes without saying that if you love fair and forge work in other areas, you'll love this knife. It has all the fundamental characteristics of that knife. You got a thumb opening, which I can open. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a bit of flax there. Then you have a flipper right there with a chimpy on the spine and a chimpy on the back spacer. Great. The next one has no name. It just, it's pending, it's pending. <laughs> so we've said it before guys, sometimes at SHOT Show we get these uh, extra sneak peek previews and so no name here. Exactly. Give, it, give some name suggestions down in the comments. I don't know if David's gonna read it, but it would be funny to see what you guys come up with. I will read them, <laughs> promises. So this knife, uh, it's, as is, you probably know this better than I do, but uh, in recent years, the gentleman tactical knife oh, yeah. has taken a rise in trend. What you wanna do is a slip knife lightweight that opens quickly, but when you put it in your pocket, it disappears. Yep. So this is a Wii knife design based on those principles. Full, uh, 
full titanium handle for the lightweight. Very slim, as you can see. It's got a high ride, but not so high that it becomes difficult to pull it out. So it's a high ride and still give you enough real space to pull that knife real out. Easy to open, as to be expected. I hope that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> With a jimping on the spine for that grip. So here, holding your hand. It's a very nice, oh, wow. comfortable it's hand. And it's knife. very light. Yes, it's exactly. surprisingly light. With a very, yeah. uh, with very uh, blade shape that's extremely well fitted for utility use or for any kind of you know task you might need for it. Yeah. So again, it's a gentleman's knife. So everybody, come on, give me your best shot at naming it, and we'll see what <laughs> see we'll, we, we can come up with. See what you guys can come up with. Exactly. No, and I, I'm actually surprised. I mean, it is a very slim knife, um, but it's it's a pretty full. It's full a full size handle, knife, yeah. but uh, very, very light. Yep. Really cool. Yeah, I think it has some uh, some similarities with our surprise at the end of the show. It, yeah. Where <laughs> even though it may, it may look like it will not fit your hand very nicely, but when you put it in your hand, that ergonomic really shows through. It's well, yeah. Well, and this is the thing is, you guys have heard us gush about Wii Knives. You guys know that they sponsor uh, our Week 1 Wednesday show. They're awesome to work with, and so I'm not saying anything that I haven't said without David sitting here. <laughs> but Wii Knives consistently, you can pull any Wii Knife out of a box off of any shelf, and immediately you're gonna have perfect centering, you're gonna have a crazy sharp edge, and you're gonna have these like really unique designs. And that's, I just love seeing this stuff on the Thank table. You. And speaking of unique, this next one's got a little yes, bit of pop to it. Absolutely. This one, it will definitely stand out because you won't find a knife like this very easily. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> It's by our uh, designer of the Hecate, Desantis. So it's called the Roman. And for me, it kind of, it, it kind of emphasized the need for, for the wanderlust in you. It's a knife that you can take with you everywhere. It's very long and slim. So it fits into, you know, your pocket at a glance. There is a heavy weight end. So you can use that to crack nut or, you know, and a fish oh, okay. or something. I was I was wondering I was wondering what that was for. Okay. We, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll say that's what it's for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll leave that rest to your imagination. <laughs> it is a frame lock, and it's a front flipper. To so watch me embarrass myself right here. Oh, uh, almost. <laughs> you know what? It's the rule. It's the rule. If you, if you flip it on camera, you're gonna mess it up. It's just the rule. <laughs> a long, slim blade for utilitarian work, for simply cutting. Uh, if you're on the road, use this to cut your meat, cut your vegetable, cut your, uh, your food, anywhere you want to go. And then I, I ran into this earlier. Uh, I'm, I'm facing this jar of, of olives and I got no toothpick or anything else to start stabbing it. Right. And as you can see, I was carrying the double helix yeah. and that thing is very, very thick blade. Yeah, it's it's a not thick gonna do knife. It. Yeah, yeah. This will be perfect to pluck <laughs> one out for your enjoyment. So a perfect, what you're saying is a perfect olive knife. <laughs> <laughs> perfect olive knife with expanded possibilities limited only by your imagination. And it's very, very slicey blade. <laughs> very, very. Slicey. All right, for the next, we have a trifecta by Justin Lundquist. We love Justin Lundquist. I will first present the little dagger like, it has a integral double guard. The name of the knife is the Angst. And if you watched our uh, uh, Civivi video, it, when I was talking about the malice and the odium, we thought the angst was going to be a perfect name for not so much malicious, but still distracting and somewhat annoyed at the same time. <laughs> right. until, until we found out the angst was being used by Justin already. We got to find a different name for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you got your, it's a single edge. So that is legal in most jurisdictions, cool. even though it looks like a dagger. But the thin uh, upper swedge definitely helps in penetrating through any surface. Yeah. So you got your guard here, and both of them act as a flipper. Cool. The next one is the OSS dagger, named after the Office of uh, uh, Strategy and, you know, I just forgot. I don't an, know. An, an office of uh, spy and strategy. It's the spy agency in World War II. Oh, okay. Oh, was, what was... Oh, shoot. Now I can't remember the name either. <laughs> it's it's, it's <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Please, I know all you guys do. know. I know you all know. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I used to know this before I was old. <laughs> it's a extremely thin profile dagger, as you can see here. And it'll fit 
with a finger grip. Because the OSS uh, dagger was issued to the agents, uh, commonly known as the lapel dagger. It will be sewn to your lapel so that you can grab this at a moment's notice and will not be noticed. So this is actually inspired by a knife that was carried by yes, the yes, OSS. It's Interesting. It's, it's, okay. The uh, design is it's, uh, it's modeled after the official OSS dagger cool. sign. We have two versions of this knife. The one you saw has a black trimming. The one I'm showing you now has a orange trimming. And is that a G10? Uh, that is G10 indeed. Yeah. So if you don't want to be too cons too inconspicuous, yeah. <laughs> you can show this. <laughs> that way if you drop in the woods, you don't lose it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You have a true heart of a woodsman because you got to have something that's noticeable. There you go. <laughs> but one thing I want to point out is when you buy this uh, Odium de OSS dagger, almost said the wrong name there, uh, <laughs> it will come with a sheath that is multifunctional. It will come with a clip, so you can use it on your belt. Cool. It opens like this, and it clips. The, the clip is detachable right here. So what you end up is with a nice lint kind of sheath you can attach a chain to for a neck knife. Yeah, Once so you, a couple different carry options. Right. And one of the things I like about this sheath, because it has such big, uh, chain holes yeah. is that you can actually sew this to your lapel, make this a true lapel dagger to free the OSS heritage. Awesome. <laughs> so that's the OSS dagger. And this one, as we mentioned, you know, I love the name. Yeah. It's called the Black Void Opus. Black Void Opus. That's a dramatic name that right there. That is a very there. interesting name. <laughs> and the, the design of this, and I'll mention that uh, my first experience with Justin's design was with the Feist. Right. Which was one of the first front flippers to really gain a huge market share. That, that, that one really did establish that kind of front exactly. flipper trend, for sure. And this Black Void Opus is also a front flipper with such a crisp action. Watch me mess this one up, yeah. too. Oh. oh, got it, on the first <laughs> shot. That's impressive because it's a very low profile. It is, it is. It's very, it's a very low profile front flipper. So that's actually really impressive to be able to get that and open. And I know some people like to do it from the uh, finger forward and draw right. back. You cannot do it on this one. No, yeah. Well, I can't, I can't. Oh, hey, I can. Yes. <laughs> Look guys, even I can front flip it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yep. That's cool. I like how subtle that is though. Titanium frame with carbon fiber trim to give you that really, really nice there we go. There it is. <laughs> to fit the Opus name. So we have uh, two more designs. Uh, Otapel has this one called the Moat. It, it really is like a motor dust. It disappears in your pocket, but it comes in handy whenever you need something to just do what that little little task that needs to be done yeah. real quick. And I know you're you're kind of a bigger knife guy. I my favorite lens is about 3.5 to about 3.75. Yeah. yeah. Although with the uh, current laws, uh, under three inch is really the way to go. Right. But this knife, even though it's small, it really fits your knife nice. Uh, it fits in your hand nicely. Yeah. Because of the ergonomic. Yeah. So I've got a. You guys know I got a medium sized hand, and even with that big nice forward choil there. I'm getting a, a four finger grip on that. So it does, it fits really nice. You got the jimping across the spine here, so it does make for a really good purchase, even though it is definitely a smaller knife. Cool. Yep. And the next design is called the Pier. We have two versions here. Zach has the uh, carbon fiber version, and I have the G10 scale. Now, the Pier, uh, it reminds me very much of the, uh, and here we're gonna commit a cardinal sin by naming other people's knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the uh, a big letter from uh, Kaiser. Yeah, similar. Right. I can see that a little bit. It's very yeah. straight profile, quick opening, with a very nice clip that'll fit everywhere, and this thing will disappear in your pocket because it takes up very little realty space. The best of all, it doesn't raise any alarms. You can carry this anywhere, and no one look at this will raise an eyebrow because it's just a quick knife I use for right. everything. Yeah. So I expect that uh, if you're looking for a knife to carry, this will. Be, 
do 99% of the things and be with you in 99% of the places. Well, it is. It's, it's nice and slim, it, and it's got a good form factor to it, and it feels really good in hand, too. I was kind Absolutely. of playing with this one a little bit before we got going. The uh, scale adds more grippiness it to, does. That, to that surface, so it will, it will not slip loose during use. Yeah, and I love the two-tone on it. I think the two-tone on this is really strong. Right. So The contrast is really yeah, well. Yeah, the, the carbon fiber is great. I mean, this is a very awesome-looking knife. Um, but again, I like a, you know something that's a little more grip to it. Absolutely. So this just G10 and that two-tone to it is, is a really neat knife. All right, and All right. then uh, last one on the table till we jump to our surprise is a new kitchen knife. Right. The Yakula. Essentially, this is the, this is a, the kitchen knife for guys who don't cook. There you go. Or at least when I use it, <laughs> it's a kitchen knife for guys who don't cook. It's a one knife that does everything. It does pairing, it does slicing. It'll open up it like dicing. your ramen packet so you it can will, put it in the <laughs> microwave. <laughs> Have you been in my kitchen lately? Yeah. Is, is, that, is that why you know? <laughs> I, I was spying on you. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a carbon fiber handle here. So it's really lightweight. The balance is very well done. Uh, put your hand on the spine and it's all rounded. So there's no sharp spaces. Great. So again, this is the knife that if you want one knife to be in your kitchen that does a little bit of everything, a jack of all trade, if you will, the Yakula is your knife. This is great. And you know, we featured actually a little while ago, we featured uh, the, uh, was it the Gyatsu? The Gyatsu, yes. Yeah, the Gyatsu that you guys have. And we, that knife is an incredible kitchen knife. So I'm excited to be able to get this out and test it out as well. Um, but we had that knife and it was so sharp out of the box we, we were cutting some tomatoes with it, you know, just to yep. test it and everything. Yep. It literally just fell through the tomatoes, just sliced. Guys, it was like scary sharp. Jamie actually has it at his house right now. <laughs> He's been doing some field testing. <laughs> he really likes it. <laughs> all right, well, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for showing us Thank all you these for knives. Us. And then just as promised, guys, there is one more knife. We've got a special guest, and uh, there's just only one way to bring him on. Oh, hey, Zach. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How much? Dude, did you want me to like start the video like the way I do? Yeah, no, you need to do the thing. I'm on it. Let him do what the thing. What is, is <laughs> up, guys? I thought you were going to sing with me. No, I can't do it. I, I'm not allowed to do it. This is right, your whatever. thing. It's whatever. Your do you want to see my knife? I want, dude, guys, I don't know if you've heard Ben. The Ben that was at Blade HQ and is now off on his own adventures has a new knife with Wii. Yes. And yes, we want to see your knife. Okay, so here's Let's the see deal. It. Guys, I have wanted to design a knife for a long time and I finally had the opportunity to. Um, so I left Blade HQ in August and I think like middle of August I had this thing drawn up and I sent it over to my good friends at Wii Knives and I'm like, hey, do you guys want to make a knife? <laughs> and they're like, absolutely. And so this is called the banter, um, and we named it after my life, yeah. which is like one big banter. <laughs> um, and it's all the things I wanted in a knife. So it passes the finger test. It's an S35VN steel. You've got a titanium thumb stud. Um, so if you want to change that to whatever color you want, anodize the, the, the jeeber jabbers out of it. Um, you got a G10 handle, liner lock, the, uh, the pocket clip, is kind of fun. It's got a uh, recessed pocket clip, recessed screws, and it's super deep carry. So basically what you're telling me is, is you sent we a napkin sketch and they created the knife that you've been talking about for years. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and like, of course it comes in it the comes blue. In, it comes, it comes in, in the blue. blue as well. So this is actually not quite the exact blue. This is more of a blurple right. than a Ben blue. Yeah, yeah. But uh, this would come in a, a Ben blue, kind of a deeper, more of my, my shirt color. Right. Cause How's a, that, Jamie? This is a prototype. <laughs> I'm sure Jamie loved it. Because it's a prototype still. This, this is, is still a proto, prototyping yep. phase. Yeah, so we're going to make a couple just small changes. We're going to um, make the pocket clip just a little taller and increase the ramp just a little bit. Just like minor things. I literally, when I got this, I said like, I got it in hand, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and I just said wow for like five minutes. But they really have done a great job on it. And it will retail for about $110. Right. Um, so that's kind of exciting, kind of fun. Uh, particularly to get S35 VN seal at that price is pretty darn good. It's really the good. lefties hate me. I did not put a left-handed option on it. And that was by design. I felt like it... You just hate Southpaws. I hate Southpaws. <laughs> I'm prejudiced. All of the things. No, I, I felt like having that notch in there to get that recession 
just didn't look good. And I'm yeah, like, kind of messes up the lines. Sorry. We all know you're a little OCD on those lines. So I am a little we, OCD. We can understand it. We can understand it. But I've been carrying it for a while. And Zach, you actually had a chance to carry it. Like real talk, what did you think? It's true, guys. So here's the thing. Uh, I've known about this for a little while. Uh, when Ben got him, he brought him by. We were able to check him out. I was able to carry one for a while. Um, I've been chomping at the bit to talk about it. So I'm so excited I to finally to. be able to talk about it. Um, but the thing, the thing is, is I carried this on the first cut. I cut myself real good with it. Pretty proud of that. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I really like it. Um, nice. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this about mine and Ben's relationship. We have a relationship where we can just be honest with each other and give each other feedback, and it's not a yes. problem. We don't have our feelings hurt. Uh, in all seriousness, I absolutely love this knife. Good. Um, it's well known that you know that HK Mini Axis is one of my favorite. It's my favorite knife of all time still. Nice. Nothing has unseated that this knife. It's probably about the same size. It's about the same size. It has a very similar handle profile, and so it really did. Like carrying it felt like just home. Nice. I was like, dude, this is awesome. nice. Yeah, that's cool. So great size, and I, I took it on some adventures. I got stuck in the mud with it, and it performed. Pictures great. are picture it, or it never happened. I think I might have one picture right. of me actually muddy. Okay, one last thing I got to tell you. Zach. <laughs> yeah, so let's see it. I worked with the Boy Scouts for a while. And I always found myself like needing a, a bevel for a striker. Okay. And so we left this at a 90 degree, and it's not sharp, but it's sharp enough to use a ferro rod. With. Interesting. So, so I didn't I didn't get a chance to test that out. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So kind of just one little last fun fact on the on this particular yeah. knife is uh, I wanted to be able to strike with it because a lot of times they'll round the spine, which is pretty. Right. But it removes a function. You can also like do this thing on your nails. Yeah, whenever I have like a little extra nail polish, I'll, I like to yeah, you can remove scratch, it with you my You can knife. scratch your nail polish off <laughs> with this knife. That's which perfect. <laughs> I think we probably should change the name to the nail polish remover, the polish polish I remover. think that's the way to do it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if that's a good idea. <laughs> well, dude, this is, this is really, really exciting. Not only, guys, is this a knife from one of our favorite people, it's also oh, a shucks. knife from one of our favorite companies. So it's just, it's a win all the way around. I hope you guys like it. Yeah. You'll have to let me know. Yeah. Real well, talk, like let me know if let you hate it or if you love it or if you're like, eh, it could have been better. Shoot me a message, I'd love to know. Yeah, let us know down in the description uh, or let us know down in the comments what you guys think of this thing. We'll have a link down in the description for this thing. You guys can sign up for the wish list around Blade Show-ish. Yeah, it's supposed to drop Blade Show-ish. Yeah, this is the so. problem with sneak peeks at SHOT Show. Sometimes we have to wait for some of our favorite yep. stuff. So around Blade Show-ish, you can be sure that we will uh, we'll be announcing this through Absolutely. all the things. Thanks so. for having me, Zach. Dude, this is so rad. I'm so stoked. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're going to go play some skeet ball or something, right? Uh, I, I I never heard. Like, okay, we're going to figure this out. I feel like... We're we, Pinball Hall of Fame. I feel like we talked about it, then it's like, well, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're going to go play some skeet ball. We hope you guys have a good night. Uh, Thanks, make sure guys. to check out our SHOT Show 2020 playlist here on YouTube. Uh, we got a ton of awesome nights. We're covering everything at the show. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.